Hello and welcome to Shambani Farm. Here we are at our Kibindu base and uh, here you're seeing uh, kids that were born in January, uh, mainly beginning from the 25th of January uh, onwards. They are really, really looking, looking good. They are uh, very healthy. They are all very active. They are, they are doing superbly well. So we're very, very excited. Uh, as I had mentioned before, we are, cr we are creating our own composite breed that will, will involve small East African goat breed uh, mixed with Gala goat breed and thereafter a boa or a red Kalahari. So we are at the first stage of crossing the small East African goat with the gala. And these are the outcome here. What you're seeing here, these kids are the crosses of the small East African goats and the gala and the gala goats. You can see they've already started taking shape of the gala goats in terms of height, uh, length, uh, even even their ears. Uh, but also one thing that I've not, not, not noticed is they all have this barging uh, noodle here on the, on the neck. I really do not know what it is. Um, if any one of you knows what it is, please uh, share that knowledge. I have been asking myself a lot of times. Of course, I've heard some other people saying that it is... Uh, it is a sign that they have enough milk or a lot of milk uh, but I don't know how that how true that is because I do have boar goats that have um, the kids are having much more milk than what these these kids are having and they don't have this uh, bulging thing on the neck so this is what I'm talking about right there uh, but I've seen it quite a lot uh, with uh, with the gala with the Gala Goats kids. Uh, I don't experience it a lot with small East African goats on their own, but for all these kids that have crossed between the small East African goats and the Gala, uh, most of them in here, you can see that they, they have this thing. Uh, and I've also uh, tried to check whether it is discriminatory in terms of uh, whether it only appears on female goats and, and, and or only male goats, like, you know, gender discrimination. But I've realized it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, I've seen some female goats that have it. I've seen some male goats that uh, have it. So there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no guarantee that, uh, you know, it, I mean, it, there's no indication that it is gender sensitive, so it is uh, appearing on all 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 gender. Um, I just also want to uh, make reference to this kid over here. Uh, that kind of coloration we call it dappled. I I love that. I love that. I would love to have goats that are that are dappled. In in the U.S., uh, a lot of boar goat farmers have bred dappled boar goats and they sell them pretty expensive um and here at shambani farm we're also hoping in the future perhaps we could also breed dappled boar boar goats so we are really um trying to make use of these uh kids that are born um with that kind of coloration and we're gonna cross them with boars several times to see what the impact will be like at the end of the day, we would like to have uh, dappled, uh, dappled boar goats. But you know, uh, you'll ask if you're crossing with 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 an already crossed breed, will that be a pure boar? Uh, honestly, yeah, it won't be a pure boar. But what we will want to do is to try to recross the boar back and back and back uh, without using the dappled. Uh, genetics in them so <laughs> um, it's something we're going to test we haven't really done that before we are 